Hello everybody and thanks for taking the time to review this product solution overview. Today we're going to be taking a look at the StorageCraft OneSafe Converged Solution, which as the name denotes is the merging of two StorageCraft solutions, our OneSafe object-based storage appliance with our ShadowSafe backup and disaster recovery software. By bringing these two solutions together, we have merged them into a easy to deploy turnkey backup and disaster recovery appliance. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right in. What you're viewing on my screen is the main dashboard for this solution, the platform that is used to configure and manage these environments is called One System. This deploys into your environment as a virtual machine. And once deployed, a configuration is really very straightforward. As you can see, we already have some machines that are being protected in this environment. But I want to walk through the process as though we were configuring a brand new environment. So once this uh, VM has been deployed and we have One System available to us, we can simply come into this environment and go through this configuration process. The first step is to add your vCenter environment. You can see that we already have one deployed here, but if I were adding a new one, I would simply add vCenter, give that vCenter environment a unique name, provide the address to that vCenter, uh, and then the administrator credentials here so that I can gain access to that environment. Once done, we'll go out and do a little bit of discovery total machine count, as well as the number of clusters and hosts and sockets that are in that VMware environment. You'll note that uh, now if we jump over to uh, this protection page, we've got a number of virtual machines in this environment. You'll also notice while I'm here that um, not only are we protecting virtual machines, but we're also protecting uh, physical machines as well. Um, we offer both agentless and agent-based backups in this solution. Uh, so for those physical machines that you want to protect, obviously you would deploy an agent to those, but with your virtual machines, if you would rather do an agentless or host-based backup, you have that option as well. Once we have our VMware environment configured, um, it's now a matter of adding some storage targets. We want to have some targets where we can actually back these systems up to because we're leveraging the Converge solution by default, we actually already have some targets that are created out of the box. But if we'd like to add additional uh, targets, we have the option to do that as well. It may be that you have some other storage devices in your environment that you'd like to leverage as a secondary target. So to add one of those, you'd simply come in, select the type, whether that's NFS, iSCSI, SMB, or even if you want to replicate out to the StorageCraft cloud, you have the option of adding that here. Now, if I wanted to replicate to the StorageCraft cloud as a part of one of my backup policies, I could simply select the StorageCraft cloud here, um, give that a name, and then provide the credentials necessary to gain access to the StorageCraft cloud services. We'll walk through that a little bit more in detail later in the demo. But in this case, if I were adding just an NFS target, I could give that a name, provide the server name and the path to the share that I'm, I'm wanting to uh, replicate to, uh, as well as if I want that share to be encrypted and all the data on that share to be encrypted, I could add my encryption passwords here. All right, so we now have some backup targets that we can leverage as well as some replication targets that we can use as well. Once we have that in place, we'll now want to go in and actually uh, create backup policies that we'll leverage uh, for each of these systems in this environment. The way that I do that is simply come into policies here and then walk through the process. You'll note that I already have some policies that have been created, a high priority, medium priority, and a low priority. Uh, but if I were creating a brand new policy uh, for this environment, I'd simply come in and select add new. Uh, I could give that policy a unique name and then I just determine what protection levels I want. In this case, if I wanted to Backup every 15 minutes, I could select that. If I wanted to capture one backup uh, once a day, I could select 24 hours. If we do 15 minutes here, um, I would select the storage target that I wanted to use, those that I've configured as a part of that um, process and configuring the storage targets. And then I would set my retention policy. And I have the ability here to get really aggressive with the number of recovery points that I want to save throughout the day, uh, as well as my daily, weekly, and monthlies. 
And again, this is uh, user configurable, so I can be really aggressive here or can be very uh, conservative with that retention policy, depending on uh, the priorities that I set for the machines in my environment. Also have a nice little diagram of the data flow in this case where I'm only backing up to a single target. In this case, a storage craft one safe appliance. If I come in and add an additional replication target that I've set up, I can select whether I want to sync all of the data or just have it uh, copy one of those daily backups. I can do that and now of course my diagram changes to match the flow of the data for this particular backup policy. But while we're talking through policies, I think it's there's a couple things that I'd like to point out as well. You'll note that my high priority I'm actually replicating or backing up directly to that one safe appliance, replicating out to another share that's local to my environment, as well as replicating out to the storage craft cloud. All of these are editable on the fly. Uh, if I wanted to come in and edit this particular policy. I can simply come in and maybe make a change here from 15 to 12. If I wanted to change the um, protection layer and change that to 15 minutes as opposed to 30, I can change that here as well and hit save. Now once I've done that, any machine that is currently being backed up by this policy, um, the next backup that we take, those changes will take effect as a part of that new policy that we just edited. If I wanted to create a new one that was based off of this uh, particular policy, I can simply select this duplicate. I can give that, maybe change it to 1B um, and make some changes here as well. Maybe I want to bump this up from 12 to 15 and change this back to every 30 minutes. Um, and I can save that and that will actually be saved out as a uh, brand new policy uh, in this environment that I can use to protect other machines. Now, once I have created these policies, it's now just a matter of coming in and applying those policies to certain machines. You'll note that I actually have all of these machines are currently being protected, um, but maybe I've got some machines that I want to um, protect with a different policy. So maybe my 2012 uh, servers, I can use uh, this elastic search to find all of those 2012 boxes. I can select the ones that I want and assign a policy and maybe I'll give these that 1B policy and hit save and you'll notice now that that policy has changed to 1B. Now once I've done that and those policies have been assigned, um, this really is kind of a set and forget type of a solution. Uh, those backups will kick off and uh, according to the policy uh, will continue to create additional backups throughout the day based on whatever we've set in that policy. Most of the time uh, will be spent in this dashboard view. And so I want to quickly walk through uh, what these tiles, each of these tiles represent. This first tile uh, denotes the overall system health. This solution is built on microservices. So if any of those services were in a bad state, that would be indicated here and we can drill down into each one of these to gather additional information that would uh, indicate to us what that issue might be if we were having one. So really important again, overall health of the system. Uh, this next tile indicates those machines that are currently not pr being protected or do not have a uh, backup policy assigned to those. A lot of times, especially in virtual environments, uh, VMs are being spun up on a regular basis and a lot of times some are left without any protection. Um, you can end up with some blind spots. And so any new VM that gets created uh, in this environment uh, would show up here if a backup policy has not um, been applied to it. Now, you have the ability to create backup policies that become default policies so that if in this environment you have somebody spin up a new VM, uh, by default it will capture that uh, default policy and start being backed up. Um, and then you can go in and, and make whatever adjustments you want to. But that way, you know, any virtual machine that is spun up in this environment will by default be backed up. Protection status, this gives us an indication of those machines that are currently being protected in this environment. Uh, according to the SLA of that uh, backup policy, if, for example, you were expecting a certain number of backups throughout the day and one of those failed for some reason, that would be indicated here. And of course, we could 
drill down into those machines as well and get additional information about those that are currently not being protected. We have options here to, to filter um, as well as being able to, uh, again, use that elastic search to find uh, specific machines that you're looking for. Coming back in, again, one of the most important things about a backup and DR environment is the storage that you're backing up to. The last thing you want to have happen is for you to reach capacity on that storage target because in that case, the result of that will be your backup jobs will start failing. And so um, right here front and center, uh, you can get a quick view of all of the storage targets that you have in your environment. And you can browse through each one of those and get information about use space and, and free space on each of those storage targets that you have in your environment. This next tile is all about your data change rates in your environment, you know, especially when it comes to uh, making plans about procuring additional hardware, understanding your data change rate and how much new data you're generating on a daily basis is really important. So we'll track that information here and you can use that as a part of your decision making process when it comes to looking at procuring additional storage. Data throughput, this is all about resource consumption. If we had backup jobs that were running at this point, we'd be getting information about the size of those jobs as well as the throughput um, with regards to those backups. This last tile gives us information about the underlying storage of this solution. As I mentioned earlier, we leverage our OneSafe object-based storage devices for this converged solution. Just a couple of highlights. We've got a lot of information available specific to uh, this storage, but I just wanted to point out a couple of things. One, the benefits of using object storage allows us to create a single namespace across the entire storage pool available to us. And as we begin to reach capacity on this device, it's as simple as adding an additional node. The namespace will recognize that additional storage that's been made available to us. We don't have to go in and configure new LUNs. We don't have to do any kind of data migration services. Uh, the nice thing about this also is that it avoids the requirement of doing forklift upgrades. Um, and of course, we get to avoid any type of RAID rebuilds. Compression and deduplication are built into the solution as well as replication. The nice thing about this storage is that it's not tied only to your backup files. If you want to leverage this for say archiving or even file sharing, you can simply come in, create new shares and target those shares for other secondary data use cases. If you want to replicate some of this data, for example, if I want to replicate the data that's in this share to another uh, OneSafe device, simply come in, select replicate, select the target cluster that I want to replicate to, if this happens to be an external device in some other location, I can provide that external IP and the port number and hit finish and we'll start replicating to that other cluster. Again, keeping this as simple as possible from a configuration and a management standpoint. Now that we have everything configured in this particular environment, the next thing that I want to show is really what's most important about any disaster recovery solution, and that's the recovery. If I wanted to do a full system recovery leveraging this OneSafe Converge solution, again, keeping it as simple as we possibly can, trying to decrease the potential for missteps, simply come in and select recovery. I have an option to do a full system recovery or even just a file recovery, but if I were to do a full system recovery, it's just a matter of coming in here finding that machine that I want to do the restore of, selecting the recovery point. We'll go ahead and give this a new name that might be a little easier for us to track. I select where I want to do that recovery to. In this case, we're going to go ahead and go right back to that vCenter environment that this VM was originally running on. And then we select the cluster and host. And we select the storage that we want to restore back to. I have an option if I want to, to bump up the number of CPUs for this machine, as well as the amount of 
RAM. In this case, we're going to go ahead and just do this as a test, so we're not going to actually migrate all the data over to this vSphere environment. And we hit Next. Quick little summary. We hit Recover. You'll note that we are creating this new VM. And if we jump over into our vSphere environment, you'll note that if we come down to that SE Cluster 2, we now have this new VM called A105. And you'll note that we're actually already in process of booting that system up. So again, very straightforward. Uh, the process was designed in such a way so that we can avoid any missteps along the way and make sure that we get that system back up and running as quickly as we possibly can. You'll note that we actually now have a new machine that's shown up as an unprotected machine. If we drill down here, the system's already picked up the fact that this new A105 VM has been created. We don't have a backup policy assigned to it, but if we wanted to, we could select that and assign a policy to that new VM. So really pretty straightforward uh, from both the configuration, deployment, management, recovery standpoint. I want to jump in and talk a little bit about our cloud services. We mentioned earlier that from a configuration standpoint, if we wanted to create a storage target that was our storage craft cloud services. We could simply select that here um, and provide the necessary credentials uh, to be able to replicate that data out or to create a policy um, that would replicate that data out to our storage craft cloud. Again, our high priority, uh, we're currently backing up to uh, one safe appliance, replicating out to another storage device, and then replicating out to our cloud services. I just want to quickly jump in and give a quick review of uh, our cloud services for those who may not be familiar uh, with this particular service. StorageCraft Cloud Services is a purpose-built disaster recovery cloud that allows for a full failover of your environment into our cloud so that you can continue to run your business in the event of a local disaster. Just a couple of highlights that I would want to point out from an ease of use perspective, once we've replicated those images into the cloud, you have an option for each of these to be able to come in and virtualize those uh, as you need. No reason for you to reach out to StorageCraft if you need to virtualize. This is a self-service portal, and you have the ability to come in and simply select the machine that you want to virtualize. Select Launch VM. Provide the appropriate password. the number of days that we want to run this VM, and select Virtualize. We'll go through the process of creating that VM in the StorageCraft cloud. It'll take a couple minutes while we're waiting. I just want to walk through a couple other uh, highlights of this solution. A couple of really nice features of this cloud solution is the ability to actually pre-configure a lot of these items prior to a disaster occurring. The last thing you want in the event of that disaster is have to worry about going in and doing a lot of configuration to get systems up and running. So you can actually come in and pre-configure a lot of this. You'll note that uh, for this particular environment, we've pre-configured the IPsec. OpenVPN has been configured. Firewall information has already been pre-configured. Um, as well as uh, leveraging our virtual machine policy to completely orchestrate this failover. Uh, again, this is all self-service. This can all be done prior to that disaster occurring. You can pre-configure the order in which those machines can be brought online so that in the event of that disaster, you can simply come in with a single click of a button and launch that VM policy and kick off that failover of all of these systems in the appropriate order. Again, from an ease of use perspective, it's a lot easier to come in and have all of this configuration being done prior to uh, the disaster occurring than having to come in and do it in the heat of the moment. We jump back over to that machine that we virtualized. You'll see that we've got a virtual machine that's been um, 
built. It's now booting up and we can come in and uh, access that system now that it's running in this environment. Again, from an end-to-end -end backup and DR solution, leveraging OneSafe Converged uh, to manage all of that backup and disaster recovery functionality on-prem, and then replicating out to the StorageCraft cloud in the event of a natural disaster. Uh, we'll have you covered from end to end. For additional information, you can reach out to storagecraft.com or to your StorageCraft account rep. Thank you again for your time.